Hi, so here we are at our final piece of the puzzle, the last part of the Reliable Sources project. So this is the part where you create an annotated bibliography and you put all the pieces together. Super important that you pay attention to the project specifications, to the details I give you, so that you make it easy for me to find out what you're doing and so that you make sure you don't miss any of the parts. You're also going to want to wait until you get uh, feedback from the submit one before you do the whole bibliography piece. There's a lot of other parts you can put together first while you're waiting for that. But once you get that, please make sure you read my feedback because I want you to do really well and I want you to know what you're being graded on. So the feedback from submit one will be critical before you create all the other evaluations or all the other annotations. You're also going to want to make sure you've checked the feedback from the first four parts or the other three parts, so four all together, so that you can submit the best possible version of all of the pieces. So I'm talking about all these pieces and all these puzzles and all these things. Let's do a screen share and tell you what I'm talking about. So. I've done two things here. Um, of course, we have the project specs, but then what we also have is an example of how it should look, kind of the formatting guideline document, I guess, if we want to call it that. But let's go through the specifications first. So we're at the part now where we're putting together all the pieces. It's kind of like Legos. They all snap together, and they all make sense, hopefully. So for this part, you're going to compile these couple of things, your topic, your evaluation criteria, you know, is it recent, relevant, and reliable, um, the sources from the, from the um, source project that you did, and then the annotation itself. So let's jump down here. I'm going to skip that page. Okay, so the annotated bibliography itself is going to have three sections, A, B, C, all right? And I'll show you in the example what that looks like. In the A section, and please label it accordingly, you'll have your research topic question, you'll have your evaluation criteria, and why you selected that criteria, so part one, part two, and then a short bibliography, a list of citations. So this is kind of the, the quick list. As a matter of fact, if you copied, if you got good feedback, and you copy the, uh, the blocks that you did from this project to your final paper. That's fine also if you want to do it that way. Just make sure you've updated anything that needs to be updated. So we've got A1, A2, and A3 right there. Now, of course, your paper should always have the proper heading. It's the same heading we've been using since part one. So if you don't remember what that is, go back to part one. There's still people that are losing a couple of points for not having the proper heading. Okay, part two. Now, this is the meat and potatoes of the project. So the other parts are mostly copying things over, um, you know, unless you need to make some edits. This is the part where you actually have to look at five sources that you picked that are high in reliability. You can't pick one that you said, well, I would never use this. Well, then don't use it. And you can't pick one that doesn't have an author, a stated author because part of the evaluation is you have to look, you know, figure out who the author is and what their reliability is and their credibility is. So assuming you've got five good sources out of the 10 that you submitted prior, then um, use five of those for this part of the project, okay? And so you'll have B1 citation, B2 the reliability rating based on the distinguishing scholarly from non-scholarly periodicals page. Three is a summary. And the summary is in your own words, what is this article about? And this really shouldn't be much more than a paragraph. And it shouldn't be, well, the article was about this, and then it was about that, and it was about this other thing. Pull out some of the, what's like the main ideas in the article, okay? But make it concise. It should be a paragraph. I don't know. People always want to know the number of sentences, I don't know, five to seven, 10, 12, however many sentences you need to make it make sense. And then the evaluation, now this is the in-depth part. This is where you go back to your criteria and you look up all these things for this article and you have to dig deep. You can't just say, well, here's the uh, little description on the author page. You know, what's the author's background? Do they, are they uh, educated in this field? Have they worked in this field that they're trying to talk about? 
What is their credibility here? Who's the publication? Who sponsors the publication? You know, whatever your criteria is, dig in as deep as you possibly can. Do a Google search, do a Google Scholar search. Um, there's just lots of places that you can look. Go to LinkedIn, see what you can find out. Lots of places you can look for the evaluation. This part is the biggest part, okay? This is two to three paragraphs, probably closer to three to four paragraphs if you're doing it the right way, okay? If you, get, if you want full credit on that. And then the very last part is this article reflection. So on this part, you're just gonna add a couple of sentences that reflect on the usefulness of the source, okay? Did it provide you with major information on this topic? Now I'm assuming you've read it, that you haven't just taken a look at it and um, you know, said, well, that's a good one without reading it, okay? So did it have information? Did you learn something from this particular article that you weren't aware of before? So that's part B. And then part C is the project reflection. And this is a pretty important part also. Because in this section, there's two parts, there's C1 and C2, so personal reflection. I've got 11 questions here. You don't have to answer all 11, okay? You only have to answer five of the 11, but you need to let me know which ones they are. Don't make me guess. And I'll show you an example of what that might look like. And then part two is an overall project reflection. And there's only three questions there but you need to answer all three of them. So five questions from part one, three questions from part two for the private personal reflection. And then of course, D is the mechanics. Okay, so that's all the things like formatting and did you upload it in the right format? Did you share it in the right way? And is there a jump menu? You know, all the things we've been doing every single time. Check for typos for sure. And then the submission process, same as what we've been doing so far. So come down to the rubric and just to give you an idea, you should always look at the rubric and use the rubric as your checklist for an assignment, because then you have an idea if you're catching everything you're supposed to catch. So it's broken into the same section. Section A is worth 30 points. Section B, the actual article annotations are worth 115 points. This is a big project. I don't often give projects that are worth more than about 50, right? So justice section is 115. And if you look down, you'll notice the evaluation is 50. So there's five articles, 10 points per article. This will give you all the details. Then we jump down to the reflection part, which is another 40. So the personal reflection part is worth 30 and the um, project reflection is worth 10. And then the mechanics, all the little stuff. So this whole project, this whole piece of the project itself is worth 200 points mostly because you're putting everything together. You're not, you're not writing everything from scratch, like the first part actually, and the first annotation you should mostly have done. You might have to do a little edits depending on your feedback, but those mostly ought to be done. So you're doing three new ones or four new ones um, for your annotations and then putting it all together. And then this just adds up how much the whole project is worth. So 325 points add a roughly, 12 to 1400 points by the end of the semester, sometimes variable. So as you can see, this is a pretty heavy assignment and you definitely don't wanna skip this part. So let's jump over to this example. And what I've done here is I've linked, this is kind of cool, you can link to a bookmark. So I've, so previous sections I've linked, when you click on that, it should come up to the bookmark to the right to the right spot here, previous sections, okay? Same thing for all the other ones that I put in there. It should link to the right spot. Now you can format your document like this in green. If it's in green, that's for my benefit. That's a note to you about this. So don't include that in your final project if you're using this as a template, okay? And these are pieces that I pulled from previous students that I thought were pretty good. And it's not just one student. I took you know one section from a student. There's like, there's probably three or four different students represented on this, but I wanted to pull the very best out of several different papers I had received in the past. You know, here's the discuss the why about, you know, this, this is from part two, why you selected them, what the definition is of your different criteria. And then the short bibliography, now I only made one example here, 
I didn't feel the need to go find all five examples. Give you one example, you'll get the idea. But I did make a note because on this particular one, this student wrote in the name of the document, but not the link on the first two, but put the link on the other three. So I made a note saying, I definitely want the link in there. The link should be in your citation, not the title. I think what might have happened if you click on these, it says replace URL with its title. And if you say yes, that's what happens is it puts the title and makes it clickable. But I don't want that. I want the actual link. OK, article annotation. Um, see the assignment for detail that goes right to that spot. Citation, reliability rating, a summary, an evaluation. And you notice how this student made a criteria in bold. So they wrote it in narrative format but made all the criteria in bold. So it was really easy for me to go down the list and say, okay, this is what they're talking about. This is what they're talking about. Don't make me find it. <laughs> Don't make me have to hunt for it. And then the article reflection about this particular article. And then part C, this is what they happened to pick or somebody else actually happened to pick for this part, personal reflection. And you notice in line, they give me the number for the question that they're responding to. So they wrote it in narrative, but that's just in line listed out which question they're responding to. That made it really easy for me to read. Like I would actually like it if you did it that way. Don't make this a Q&A. Don't write out the question and then write out your answer. I already know what the questions are. I just need to know which one you're responding to, all right? And then project reflection they put down here also. So all together, this is a pretty reasonable template for how this assignment will work. Now, you have two weeks to put this together, all right? And then we're done with the whole project. I am really curious about those reflection questions and what you come up with at the end. If you have any questions, use the Discord help channel or message me directly, okay? But don't wait until the last minute get on it. There's a lot of this you can do, even if you haven't read your submit one um, feedback yet. There's still a lot of pieces you can start putting together. You can start, you can copy the template if you want, delete out all the stuff that doesn't apply and fill in your own stuff. So get started on this. This is a, this is a low homework week, except for this project. This project's going to take you a bit. All right. Let me know if you have questions. <laughs>